Hi everybody, welcome to Nerex channel. Today I will explain how to use the Modbus protocol on Nerex. Modbus is an industrial protocol based on RS485 and it is very common in the industrial application to communicate with PLC and other devices. Uh, it's an old protocol but still very used in factories and other places. And today uh, we will use it to, to create a Modbus slave. Uh, it means uh, we can create a board and put this board in your Modbus network uh, to communicate up, up to 32 devices. And this board will respond to comments from some Modbus master. Uh, as you know, the, the board we are using, the STM32F4 Discover board, doesn't have the Modbus transceiver. You will need a transceiver similar to this one. You can find it in many places, even in the AliExpress. Uh, it is this small device. It is based on Max 485 and it is low cost. Uh, also, to, to test the communication, you need a USB to RS485 model, like this one, is also low cost. And you plug in your USB computer and it will send, it will submit comments to your board and your board will respond to those comments. Okay, so let's get started. Open the Linux terminal. Enter inside Nurex space. Nurex. Execute make this clean to clear our previous configuration. Now we can uh, configure the existing Modbus uh, slave board profile. We can execute tools configure.sh stm32f4 discover Modbus slave. Right. Uh, now our board is it configured, is enabled to use the, the Modbus and I will show all options I selected on this profile. So just to, to let you know, execute make menu config. Uh, the first option we need to select is the UI board we want to use as the uh, RS485. Uh, Enter inside STM32 peripheral support and enable the USART1. Let's find it here. Yeah, this one. The second WART is used to communicate with the Nurex shell. So we need to enable the USART1 and we need to define this port will be used for RS485. We can enter inside uh, use art configuration and select the option RS485 on use art one and keep the pin polarity as one. Okay, we can exit, exit again, and inside device drivers uh, in the serial configuration here uh, we need to define uh, our user to one uh, body height and other configurations for the mod bus uh, in this case I am I am using this body height and I also changed the uh, the party configuration to two okay and now in the application configuration, we need to enable the 
mod the free mod bus and uh, in this case uh, I enabled the mod bus label support uh, using the free mod bus and and the most important in this case is the mod bus RTU support uh, I also enabled the ASCII tool but it's not necessary for this configuration and also you can enable some uh, Modbus function. Here I selected everything, but you can uh, you can select only the functions your uh, Modbus board need to support. You uh, you don't need to select everything if you if you don't want to use all the functions. Okay. So now we can exit and execute make to compile the source code. Okay, our compilation finished correctly. Now we can flash the firmware inside the STM32F4 discovery port. Uh, let's clear the screen to, to see the command correctly. Let's to use the OpenOCD command to flash it. Okay, the firmware was flashed in the board. Now I will explain how to connect the MAX485 model in the STM32 discovery board. Okay, let me explain how to wire the MAX485 to the STM32 discovery board. First thing first, uh, we need to, uh, to wire together to tie the D and the RE pins like I did here with a solder uh, together uh, in the in the pins in the in the pins pad directly. Uh, you don't need to do this way if you prefer. You just you can just use a wire to uh, to connect the both the together, but. I did this way because it is easier to, to do. So let you start with the uh, with the power connection. We need to connect the GND to GND pin this side and the 5 volts to VCC pin here and then we will connect the PB7, this orange wire, to the RO, okay? And you need to connect the PB6, the brown wire, to the DE pin, this pin here. And finally, you need to connect the PA15, the yellow wire, to the DE RE that we solder together. Very nice. We connect the Max 485 model in the in the board. So now we can uh, test if the Modbus protocol is working correctly. So. Let execute Minicon, reset the board. Uh, the first thing we need to, to verify is if we have two ports. Okay, you have TTI S0 and TTY uh, S1. Let's see if the Modbus command is here. Okay, it is here. If I run Modbus dash Eight to help. Um, I know I, uh, I need to execute the Modbus uh, dash E to keep it running. Right now it's time to uh, to run the uh, the MB pool in the computer using the uh, the USB uh, to 
RS485 will have here. Uh, let execute m mb pool this command and let's see if you get the the data from the board very nice it is returning the random numbers from the board uh, as you can see the value the 16 uh, 16 bit value is changing all the time. That is it. In the next video, I will explain how to use the Modbus Master to communicate with some external Modbus uh, slave device. So, I hope you had enjoyed this video. If you are not subscribed to Nerdx channel, please click in the button to subscribe and also click in the bell icon to receive notifications when I post a new video. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. See you in the next video.